So part two is making the conrod. Um, the way I decided to do this was to print a one-to-one uh, -one scale uh, drawing from the drawings that I did in SolidWorks. Just put it on a bit of paper and then glue it and stick it to this uh, bit of bar that, of aluminium stock that we have. And then I then, I then, I then, I chucked it up in the mill and basically just squared off all the sides. <coughs> Excuse me squared off all the sides so that I have something a nice blank to work with because these are the extruded sides um, and they're not very flat so once I had that I then could grab it in the uh, jaws of the vise and find the centre of my um, big end opening the big end hole and once I'd done that I could then uh, drill um, with a centre drill just to open up the hole and then start to open up that hole. Now I opened up this hole to uh, I think it was 8mm and then I moved from the dimensions that I have my drawing with the mill straight across to the small end hole and then opened that up and I think that was to like 6mm or something. Then what I did was I turned up this uh, little plug um, so this fits the small end of the uh, the big end sorry of the rod you can see there that plug just fits in there so I can now fit um, the con rod into the rotary table so there's my rotary table set up this is just a small little rotary table that we have I can then stick the con rod into the rotary table like that and anchor it down now it's not the most secure way of holding this but it is only tiny we're not taking that much material off there's a bit of a close-up so you can see what we're trying to do and I have clearance from the jaws to the actual rod because we're wanting to do the whole side surface and the whole the depth of this piece of alley is 12 mil and we need to whittle that down to 7. Regardless I got my nice the brand new cutter out the brand new 10 mil carbide cutter and as you can see there I've got a bit of clearance so we're not going to hit anything. I then swapped that cutter out because I thought we've got a, quite a bit of material to remove for such a small milling machine. This is our smaller one. This is um, for doing finer work and what have you. And the biggest end mill this thing can hold is a 16mm. So, like I said, this is the one of the lower powered machines that we have. So I've got my uh, the roughen end mill and I'm just basically just rotating the bottom of the rod around that centre just to give us that curve profile you can see there. The only one problem about doing this it, this kind of way is it does nibble the paper and you can't see what the hell you're doing. So I've got this rough textured surface and then I put a new carbide uh, end mill in so I can just clean up the side and make it all look all pretty. Then I did the same thing where I made another plug you can see that I reduced the size of this plug to fit the small end of the rod and it was just rinse and repeat basically, it was just going over the uh, same procedure to get very close to that line you can see on the paper and then once I'd done that I could then remove it from the um, rotary table and stick it in the mill and basically all I'm doing is I'm lining up the line on the paperwork with the jaw line, the, the jaws really, it's not really that precise, it's just lining up by eye whizzing an end mill across it and then this is what we're left with we're left with which is you know an okay con rod for what we need it's very very basic and if we need to make any well I, I can imagine we'll need to make some modifications there's a lot of material there to play around with so we can mess around with that in the future right so this is part three of the easy engine and in this part we are making the uh, cap basically the, the cylinder head the cylinder cap whatever you want to call it and uh, I've got a big uh, billet stock here of I think this is 60 something I can't bloody remember it's actually one of the sexier pieces of aluminium we have and it machines just a bit differently than the usual extruded stock crap that you get that the uh, corn rod was made out of any road without pissing around let's get on with it so I'm lobbed a bit off and uh, I'm coming to the, ex the the extremes of what this tiny little shitty lathe can handle. Um, this is 70 millimeter stock, so I've basically designed the entire engine around what I can physically machine with the machine that I have access to, or 
more importantly the machine that I can play around with and no one's going to bother me with doing it after work and on weekends and stuff. Anyway, enough of that. So basically the first thing I do is I machine this step which is the this is actually going to be the mating surface which is where the head gasket goes and as soon as I've done that and marked out exactly how far and deep I need to go I then flip it around and I've got a bit of phosphor bronze in there you can see between the jaws so it doesn't mark that nice surface that I've just machined and then I start turning the ex the OD and I was going to say the exterior diameter then um, I turn that down and then I then face it off so we've got a nice shiny piece of aluminium the next thing I do is machine the uh, chamfer that goes all the way around the outside. This is more aesthetics than anything else, there's no real need for this. And then stick this in the rotor table and then mark out my four, um, my four hole pattern which is going to be the uh, cap and cylinder bolts that are going to run through the cap, the cylinder, all the way to the engine casing, um, the crank casing. So I use the rotary table for that. Once I've done that I then set this up in the um, mill and I get a little, this is a little tiny, I think it was a 4mm end mill so I've got to do this in two passes, I'm using a carbide end mill. And I'm slowly slowly chugging along with this thing because I don't want to snap any of the end mills. And as you can see that's two passes to give me the cooling fins and also to give me enough meat um, so we can basically withstand the compression that's inside the actual cylinder and it's a pretty simple case of doing that and then machining um, the recess of the depression for the spark plug and the four counter bars for the bolts to go all the way through to the cylinder <laughs> 